good afternoon. We have just had screening of Behave. It is Sunday, the 3rd of February 2024. In case any of you have lost any idea of what time and what day it is, thank you very much for bringing this to us. I had, uh, so first of all, let's start off by, if you would all mind introducing yourself and telling the audience and people watching at home who you are and what your involvement is in this film. Yes, uh, hello Spencer, thank you for, uh, for having us. That's um, very much appreciate this. As you know, my third time here and I always love to, to, to come here. I am uh, Francesco Gabriele and I am the director and producer of uh, Behave. Hi Spencer, thank you for having us. And uh, every time uh, I see Behave on the screen, I get so emotional. I don't know why. <laughs> I am Giorgia Viero. I am the baddest killer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so be nice. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Nora. Um, I play Lily. <laughs> Hello. <coughs> My name is Washam. Um, I play the funny guy, I play Karen, <laughs> and that is all. <laughs> so I need to tell you a little story. Peter and I were um, in Locarno, and it was absolutely pissing down with rain, and I looked at my phone, I've got this email message from you, which, because I'm rude, I never replied to, and it said, Spencer, I've just sent a film to you, it's called Cul-de-sac, you're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, tell us the transition from cul-de-sac to behave and why. Okay. Yes, you're talking about a different one, like a short film. Yeah, oh, okay. That is, that. okay. Um, that is another project that is uh, called the Kill the Sack, and it's um, it's still in the dark comedy genre. Okay. Um, and uh, funny enough, it was also set in a similar location. Uh, the transition was interesting because as soon as I finished to uh, shoot that short film. Uh, I, I basically um, met, uh, let's say, uh, Georgia, um, and uh, I met her, and uh, she had this project that uh, she, she recently moved to London, and she had a horror film project that she wanted to, to, to make, and this original idea. And uh, as you could see, there are a lot of Italian elements, and there is like a slasher, and uh, as you know a little bit, uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of 70s slasher yes. films, giallos. And so um, we had a small budget, uh, um, but uh, the, the experience of filming Kill the Sack was very, very good in that location. So um, uh, we were able to have a very good relationship with, this, uh, with the owner, and we were able to arrange a very uh, you know, good deal to shoot for two weeks in this location and we were able to keep the cost down and having a production value that was quite high. So basically, just a couple of months after I finished to shoot Kill the Sack in that uh, location, I started to film this, uh, uh, this other feature that is a, um, it's very different in terms of style if you watch uh, Kill the Sack or if you watch Kill the Sack to, to behave. Uh, but um, there are some elements, like I, I love to mix uh, also horror with some funny elements and some moment of, uh, you know, lightness, uh, um, because I think also sometimes the punchline and the horror can be even um, stronger in, uh, in, in, in some moment. So this, this is the transition of uh, I would like to request. And um, Nora, how did you become involved in this project? Um, so I, uh, I first met Francesco by doing film posters, I do graphic design. I actually did the poster for Behave. Um, I think we worked on a short film previously and Andrea, the production designer for Behave, mentioned, oh, there's, you know, that he's auditioning for these characters and she sent me the slides and I was like, oh, absolutely. Lily, I very much resonate with her because I am a younger sister and I am that annoying. So, it was, it was really awesome, and then just from there, it was incredible, because we worked so, together so many times with, on the graphic design side to actually be able to be there as an actor. It was really awesome. And how about yourself, Shin? Um, I first met Francesco in university. He was one of my TV and movie like, teachers, basically. 
And then eventually I moved on to short films with him, and I was in cul-de-sac. And then he was just like, okay, cool, yeah, I need you back for this film, <laughs> and now, now I'm here. So, yeah. And uh, how do you feel about age gap relationships? <laughs> <laughs> um, Love it. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, George, yeah, how about you? How did you get involved? I met Francesco, let's say, in a magic way, mm -hmm. and we reconnect, and I explained to him that I had this idea in mind, but it was a challenge for me to bring uh, it to life, and he helped me a lot, because, uh, of course, my English is very limited, so I would have never been able to do the screenwriting of the novel, so Dan Sproson was super helpful. Yeah, but uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, he was able to put all my ideas together. And um, of course, it was um, good for me to interpret uh, the Italian mama because uh, uh, I know a bit how it works in Italy. <laughs> there is uh, this um, very strong connection between the mother and the male son. It's incredible. Mm. So in a certain way, I wanted to, to laugh at this concept and also to bring up a very peculiar element that is the Galateo that is a, a guide on behavior and nowadays that there is a mess really <laughs> maybe it's useful paradoxically mm -hmm. some some guide like Galateo and so having fun of this and also maybe in a certain way you know the people that wants to impart you some behavior are tricky in life, you know? Yes. And so I wanted to put all this together. Yeah. yeah. And uh, funny enough, the first time we met with George was uh, like uh, 15 years ago, like in Rome, during a short film that was a horror film. Um, I, I was like very, we were both very, very young. You were young. Uh, but <laughs> interesting enough, there was like the special effect artist of that, because I know that also here you are going to have the infrared by Dario Argento, was Sergio Stivaletti that yep. did all the special effects uh, yep. for Dario Argento film. So the very first project we worked together was a horror with, um, yeah, also Sergio Stivaletti. That's really Yeah, that's true. That's very, really cool. Um, so, so where did the idea originate from, and were there any, you know, you know, were there any influences, any specific influences from Italian cinema of yesteryear? Um, I can reply to the influences um, about the original idea. Maybe then you you can. Uh, yeah, I, I. Yeah, in terms of influences, obviously, when uh, she told me about this idea of. Uh, uh, an Italian, I mean, obviously we are spoiling a lot, but it's fine. Um, like uh, an, an Italian um, uh, female um, killer is like is something that wasn't done uh, until recently, I would say, because then obviously with Pearl or with different movies that came out recently, it was explored more. But in the past, historically, all the slasher had more, mainly like male uh, character. And having a character that was uh, a female and Italian, it was very, very interesting to me and appealing. And uh, obviously, I could see a lot of reconnection with, uh, and a lot of links with 70s Jalos, like, uh, obviously, something of deep red in terms of stylistic choice. The photography was very, we tried to be as much as possible, you know, with, with the color palette, red, blue. But in terms of style, like, um, two movies uh, were the most uh, prominent for me. For sure, Scream by Wes Craven, but uh, uh, the other one is Torso, that is uh, by Sergio Martino. That uh, um, I, for a lot of people is considered like the very first slasher ever made, and he has a lot of um, comedy elements and there's a lot of uh, funny characters. Uh, and I think yeah, Torso was probably one of the main influences in terms of uh, of style when making this, mixing some of the 70s slasher like the last image. Uh, you know, in the old in the 70s, Jalos, there is always the end with this uh, image and the credits on top. Uh, so a lot of um, things came from there. And in terms of original ideas? Yeah, um, the challenge for me was to explain to the audience uh, that uh, there is some... I don't want to spoil too much because if we are lucky, we will manage to do 
a prequel and a sequel, finger crossed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Polly, it's a very disturbed person, but why? Because she's also a victim of the postpartum depression. So in, in some ways, psychopathy can affect everybody. Mm. Even, you know, a, a, a good looking girl, uh, blonde, uh, innocent, with freckles. No, it, psychopathy can be every one of us. Mm. And plus this, this uh, very important psychological disease of the mothers, the new mothers. And it's impressive because it's, I think it's uh, underestimated as a thing. So, and then also, sorry, Francesco, no, no, I watched a movie, I don't know the, the title in English, maybe you can help me, uh, the one with Matthew Lillard and the Mama Killer. And that was, it was 19th movie. Yeah, and there was also Barbara Streisand at the end. Uh, yeah, 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 it was... Bravo, oh, okay. bravissimo. Yeah. I you. was... <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Bravissimo, Bravo. very good. And I was also influenced a bit by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. I really love the fact that all the characters are like so inflated, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, like everybody's kind of like an exaggeration, like a lot of those mm -hmm. 70s films. And there was a lot of those character tropes. And I, at some point, I was expecting someone to do this. Um, <laughs> What, you know, I mean, obviously homage, I guess, but when you're acting um, in that role, maybe you look, go down towards Nora, um, what's it like to sort of like create these kind of inflated characters? I mean, yeah, as you said, I think in sort of cult classic slasher horrors, it is almost like a category per character. It's usually... You see it in, in video games as well, it's very similar, where you've got like the cool one, or the jock, or the nerd, and like it's that kind of thing. So when we first did a table read, we spent, I think it was, was it half an hour or an hour of essentially character work, where we all talked about how our characters knew each other, and, and the backstory, and, and me and, um, I say India, that's not actually her name in real life, but we obviously play sisters. And we were figuring out exactly what our family was. Um, so we share the same dad, but we have different mums. Um, so we had this whole backstory that we all created. And I think that helped kind of elevate the characters when we were on set, where we were able to exaggerate these specific tropes. Um, and it was just really fun to just play around with them. Like we, we were able to bounce um, off of each other quite well, I think. Hmm. Um. Did you struggle, Francesca, this, this is probably the best uh, question for you, did you struggle with some of the humour, you know, in terms of like whether you thought it would hit or not? I mean, because I, mean, I, I heard the audience, <laughs> it hit, but was there ever a time that you questioned some of the humour in that? Uh, yes, um, and especially when you do something that it has humour, um, as you know, like comedy is very much also uh, a cultural thing. So the, the screenwriter was British from an original idea of an Italian. So uh, developing some uh, um, jokes for me sometimes, also some of them I had to really maybe understand also sometimes in terms of language or in terms of uh, uh, why it was like funny in that moment and understand how, if it could work or not. So obviously, in terms of directing, is uh, is an extra challenging sometimes. Um, so yeah, I had to work harder, and sometimes it was a questionable thing, especially because, as uh, Nora was was saying, like uh, um, there are kind of stereotypes in terms of characters, but you have to be careful again to don't overplay in some moment. This is why, like, yeah, hopefully I will never do like yeah. stuff <laughs> like that. But you have to arrive at a point where you don't overplay the joke. So um, that was the, the, the difficult part, like pushing the character, uh, understanding the character and sometimes the stereotype, but make them uh, believable in a way that uh, otherwise uh, you don't connect with them. So there has to be something uh, that is a little three-dimensional uh, and they, the delivery cannot be, you know, comedia dell'arte over the top, otherwise it will become too hard. So maintaining that balance between pushing for the jokes and in sometimes the moment uh, of 
more drama and um, it, 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 it wasn't uh, an easy balance. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple of scenes that, uh, in some, I mean, I went with this in uh, different countries, like in Romania and Italy, with, in different festivals, and it's interesting how there are some scenes in which some people like don't react when it's uh, it's a different language than in English because maybe they don't understand the jokes with subtitles, but some other that are more visuals that in which people are really into it. For example, the jump scare in the bed with with the girl and after the sex scene, or some other um, moment where they are just visual and it's not lines, it's not uh, dialogue driven, where people are really really like. Um, involved and they always, you know, um, laugh at the joke, let's say. Yeah. Rasheen, um, what was the biggest challenge of the film for you? Um, it was most likely trying to find the humour. Like, Callum was a difficult character to start off with for me, and then I was just like, as slowly, like, as days went past, I was just like, okay, yeah, this is a character. I obviously base it off like classic horror films and getting the funny character and everything. But I also have to thank the entire sleaziness to one of my friends because I looked at him and I was like, you're perfect. <laughs> 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 yeah, I did like, I really enjoyed your facial expressions at some points during the film. So well done. Um, have we got, a, I mean, you've got a really good reaction from the audience. So hopefully you've got some questions out there. Can we have some hands in the air? Hi, um, I wonder if your character killed the gardener's daughter. Ooh. Is that something for the prequel, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> you are very clever. <laughs> but I won't answer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, right. Um, I want to be on TV, be on more films. Like, I mean, like, high budget films. Hopefully, one day. Um, uh, I might start on music career as well. Do it. Okay. Go for it. Um, I'll do that. <laughs> um, I think because this is my first feature film. Um, and I've very slowly built up um, what I'm hoping will be a showreel. Um, so I think my my plans for the future will be, um, yeah, getting an agent, having a showreel, getting more work. But in terms of roles, what I'd love to play, I do quite like playing the younger sibling in films. And I, I know it's probably just because I am the younger sibling, but it's very it's a very fun relationship dynamic to play. Um, I, I, I love horror, so I'd love to be more horror. Probably more villain stuff, but yeah. I agree with Nora, I love villains. And, uh, because maybe, because in real life I'm too sweet. And maybe on the screen I can bring up all my bad behavior and stuff. Yeah, maybe it's for that reason. But uh, honestly, I think when I read a script that the villains are the most intriguing. And uh, maybe also the, the hardest to play because you, you, you have to show, and you have to balance how to show the shapes of a three-dimensional personality, which is a true challenge, I love it. I love horror movies, of course, and I see myself in horror movies. This is the <laughs> genre. <laughs> we all love horror. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it would be obviously, the, the dream is um, keep doing uh, my projects, but with uh, bigger budget, like, uh, in a way that a lot of people say, yeah, when you work with smaller budget, you have creative control. Well, depends, because obviously <laughs> everybody I think would love to have a decent budget where you can actually have, and it, uh, you don't have to constantly work, work under time pressure, uh, and uh, without, you know, you can afford prosthetic that is in a different level. So working on, um, on a bigger budget film, that would be my dream, yeah. Okay. Are there any more questions out there? So, um, I can 
with somebody, me and wife. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I, I, I really enjoyed your character. But I suspect you had quite a lot of fun in the book, um, and I really felt the, 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 the there was like a channeling there between your character and the mum, deep red, uh, profondo rosso. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, I really like that. That was so yeah. well done. Um, so what's so you've shown at a bunch of festivals where. Is it, have you got anything else booked in yet for this? Uh, we, yeah, we got very lucky because we secured um, a very good um, sales agency for the film that's um, screened and presented at um, the European Film Market last week in Berlin. Uh, we should have soon um, a United States and Canada uh, release, like uh, streaming and maybe DVD release. Um, and then uh, hopefully in, um, hopefully we'll be distributed in different territories. Um, so fingers crossed, because then that is also very, very important when the film will mm -hmm. be out, all of how it will be like uh, seen. And uh, so yeah, at the moment, uh, uh, we got very lucky with this, um, with the sense here. Cool. Big round of applause for all of our